It's here. The zombie apocalypse. The dead roam the streets, and whether it was a plague, an ancient curse, fungus spores, or mutated rabies, none of that matters now. What matters is survival. But how are you going to survive in a world where you are now the main course for billions of flesh-eating zombies? As usual, the Infographic Show has your back, and today we're going to teach you how to keep from being the main course with our top 10 zombie survival life hacks. Number 10. Go North. No, even further north. Our first life hack is not really a hack, it's just more a general survive this nightmare and don't get eaten tip. When the zombie apocalypse hits, you're going to be joining millions of survivors all trying to figure out their next move. Some guy is always going to suggest you go to a government safe zone, because like he totally hears they've been working on a cure there. Don't listen to him, he's just going to send you on a pointless side plot and probably get a person or two killed while he's at it. Forget the government, because you're on your own. Now obviously you're going to want to get out of the cities, seeing as that's where most people live and those people are now zombies. Staying put in a city will be like rolling up to a fresh lion kill and wrapping yourself up with a carcass. So while you may be tempted to be near places you can scavenge for supplies, don't. You're going to want to find a place with abundant natural resources because from now on, your meals are coming straight from Mother Nature herself, and she doesn't deliver on Uber Eats. More importantly, you want to go somewhere that zombies are going to have a difficult time finding you, or at least eating you. Flesh of any kind has a pretty hard time dealing with the cold. It tends to freeze and become very rigid and inflexible. And with no blood circulating through their dead limbs, zombies that freeze are going to become undead statues in no time at all. That's why you want to be going north. Really, really far north. Like literally as far north as you can get. If you've hit polar bears, then you're on the right track. Sure, survival will be a bit difficult in those extreme latitudes, but you know what else makes survival hard? Being eaten alive by zombies. In the far north of Alaska or Canada, you'll only be dealing with approximately three months of mild temperatures before that thermostat starts dropping, and once it does, any zombie that's followed you up there is going to turn into a frozen popsicle. And at that point, it'll be as simple as leisurely knocking heads off one at a time. Number 9. Learn to get clean drinking water. Okay, so you've taken our advice and decided to head north into the wilderness. Now you're going to have to deal with one of the basic necessities of life, clean drinking water. Obviously, if you can hit up any local army surplus or survival gear store, then you absolutely should do that and get yourself some handy water filtration systems. But if you missed out or if man-made filters are just like too mainstream for you, then fret not. We're going to teach you how to make a basic water filter with nothing more than a plastic bag and a bunch of rocks and dirt. First, you want to cut a very small hole at the bottom of the bag, then line the entire bottom with a layer of rocks. Above that, make a layer of sand, and then a rock layer again. Repeat two more times to make a total of four layers alternating between rocks and sand, and voila, you have your own homemade Brita filter. Sort of. It won't get rid of microscopic contaminants like bacteria, viruses, and polar bear pee, but it'll do a great job of filtering out larger particles and make water mostly safe to drink. Number 8. Don't hit up an army surplus or survival store. You remember how, like 30 seconds ago, we told you to hit up a surplus or survival gear store? That was a test. And you failed, and now you're dead. In fact, you should be doing any zombie prepping now before the actual zombies hit, because trying to do so after the fact is probably only going to get you killed. See, it's like when you visit an online forum and see posts by hundreds of people all proclaiming how they would hit up their local gun shop first thing and become some sort of badass zombie killing vigilante, except literally everybody else is going to have the exact same idea. Not to mention, you know, the gun shop owners themselves, who by virtue of owning a gun shop, are probably pretty heavily armed. Rather than heading to a place full of desperate, terrified people who are now heavily armed, just use that time to get away. You're going to have a pretty narrow window of time to actually use highways and city streets before they become a congested mess, and it's far better to use that time to get out of Dodge while all the internet tough guys fight each other at the gun store. Besides, you'll probably be able to hit up similar shops in much smaller population towns long after the initial wave of panic has hit and most of your competition is, well, dead. Number 7. Stop aiming for the head. Everyone knows that the golden rule of zombie survival is to aim for the head. 
for some very weird reason. I mean, we're dealing with the living dead, the brain at this point is just a bunch of dead tissue. And yet the golden rule is zombies can't die unless you destroy the head. Well, we'll leave that for the hardcore zombie lore fans to figure out, but for the rest of us, we're worried about two things in our zombie apocalypse, survival and conserving resources. Aiming for the head is a notoriously difficult thing to do. You may be a whiz in PUBG, but firing a weapon in real life is quite a bit more difficult than video games make it out to be. There there's a reason why police officers and soldiers are taught to aim center mass instead of to take sweet headshots, and that's because center mass is far easier to hit and will seriously ruin somebody's day. Now a zombie may not have vital organs functioning anymore and can't bleed out, but they do still have to obey the laws of physics and if you manage to destroy a vertebrae or blow out a kneecap, that zombie isn't walking anywhere. Our skeletal system is easy to overlook, it's on our inside and literally just sits there your entire life doing a whole lot of nothing. But one of the things it does do is provide structural support for your muscles, and without that support we'd all basically be fleshy beanbags. For zombies, destroying that support is going to drop them faster than Taylor Swift drops number one hits about ex-boyfriends. And while it may not be a killing blow, that doesn't really matter if the zombie can't move around anymore. Number 6. Learn First Aid You're gonna get hurt in the zombie apocalypse, it's pretty much inevitable. Now, there's no hospitals to take care of you and no 911 to call and get an ambulance. On the one hand, it's kind of nice that you won't be shelling out your life savings just because you had to visit the hospital once. On the other, you're probably going to die now from totally preventable causes. We've largely forgotten our ancient past, and the modern wonders of civilization have insulated us from just how terrible life is in the wild, but also just how terrible our bodies are for living in the wild. We're pretty much the slowest and weakest of animals amongst our weight class, and our bodies are just lousy at surviving in the wild. Our bones are basically made out of glass, in comparison to thick tough cow or bear bones, and ridiculously thin skin has no thick fur to protect us from the cold or cuts or scrapes, and it's gonna be pretty important to learn how to take care of yourself and others. So learning some first aid now before your neighbors are trying to eat your brains is going to do wonders for your survival. Number 5. If nothing else, learn tourniquets. Every American soldier receives some basic first aid training, but the one thing that every soldier learns how to use and apply to themselves or others is the tourniquet. Our bodies are not only weak and pathetic in comparison to the other animals, but they have a lousy habit of gushing blood everywhere that really should stay inside your body. For minor to moderate cuts and wounds, applying direct pressure with makeshift bandages and perhaps elevating an affected limb will do. When the wound is serious enough though and your body won't stop pumping all its blood out onto the floor, no matter how much you ask it not to, you're going to have to take some drastic measures. In these circumstances, you're going to want to shut the flow off as soon as possible and the best way to do that is a tourniquet. Simply tear a shirt into a long strip and tie it around your limb with a knot, then place a stick over the knot and tie a second knot over for the stick. Now, you're going to crank that stick in a circular motion, tightening the strip of the shirt tied around your limb. You're going to want to really crank that thing, because your goal is to shut off blood flow. But you need to ensure that you're shutting off the flow from deeply embedded arteries, so you're going to require a great deal of pressure. Once the blood has stopped doing its best to vacate your body, you're going to want to secure the stick with a second strip of cloth and tie that as tightly as you can as well so that the stick doesn't unwind and loosen the tourniquet. Number 4. Store up fuel, but only if you plan on using it within a year. In every zombie apocalypse show or movie, there's always the scene of survivors hotwiring cars and making a last minute escape from a horde of angry zombies. In the real world, depending on how long ago the apocalypse began, trying to do that will only leave you trapped in a very much dead car, surrounded by, well, the dead. That's because gasoline can and does break down over time and trying to store it for later use is going to prove difficult under the best of circumstances. You can use some commercially available stabilizers to extend the lifetime of gasoline, but the best you're going to get is maybe a year and two or three months. Same goes for diesel fuel. So if you're hoarding up fuel, then good job because you're becoming proactive about your survival, but also make sure you use it as soon as possible before it becomes useless sludge. Number 3. Learn to make fire without matches or a lighter. Yep, the fuel inside a lighter will eventually break down too, and matches, well, they can get ruined by the weather or zombie attack victims rudely bleeding all over them. Your best bet will be to learn how to make a fire the way our ancestors did, and if a bunch of prehistoric cavemen could make the fire, then come on, how hard can it be? 
Well, actually, it's ridiculously difficult to make fire the old-fashioned way, as many people who have to pass a military survival course have learned the hard way. Even if you know how to create a bow and a stick contraption to start the fire and happen to have great kindling, it can still take a very, very long time to get even a tiny ember going. Instead, get your hands on a magnifying glass, which should be easy enough to find at any science classroom. You can also use a highly polished crystal, which you can find in any new-agey mystical mumbo-jumbo store. As long as the crystal can focus light the way a magnifying glass does, you'll be able to get fire started in no time with nothing more than the sun. While this won't work very well on cloudy days, even with just a little bit of sun, you'll very quickly be setting fire to everything and anything you desire. Just remember, forest fires are still a thing, and this time there's no fire department coming to put it out. Be ashamed to survive The Walking Dead only to roast yourself alive because you didn't listen to Smokey the Bear. Number 2. Turn 2-liter soda bottles into cordage There's few things in the world more useful than rope. And in a world gone all zombie, having rope can be a literal lifesaver. You can use it for everything, from harnesses, securing doors, making leashes for pet zombies, and tying off limbs that refuse to stop bleeding. In the survival community, rope is known as cordage, and you're going to definitely want to get your hands on some. Typically, you can make a pretty decent cordage from tough, stringy plant fibers, pulling them off in long strands and wrapping them together to make a thicker single rope. This can be time-consuming and, depending on where you are geographically, impossible. While it won't make a rope, though, you can get a decent length of cordage that you can use for a variety of things from something that, thanks to mankind's refusal to actually put trash in the trash bin, is now a part of every natural environment. 2-liter soda bottles. Simply take your trusty knife – you did pack a knife into your survival kit, right? – and then cut off the bottom of the soda bottle so that you're left with what's essentially a giant funnel. Then cut down into the plastic on one side of the bottle for a thickness of cordage that you want. And after that, it's as simple as cutting the plastic into a long, unbroken strip. The trick is to keep the thickness even, but with a little practice, you'll easily get the hang of it. Besides, it's not like discarded plastic bottles are uncommon or anything. There's literally millions of them in the ocean alone, keeping all the sea turtles company. Number 1. Build a shelter So by now, if you've taken our advice, you've left the cities behind and you're headed up north like you got Klondike fever. Civilization tends to get a bit sparse the further north you go, but because we're turning you into a bona fide zombie apocalypse surviving badass, you don't need no home, you'll make your own. While wild animals can sleep perfectly fine in the elements, we're pathetic, weak creatures who can't even survive one rainy night in the wilderness without the hides of other animals to protect us from the cold. Pretty high on your list of priorities, somewhere between don't get eaten by zombies and find food and water, you're going to want to put build a shelter. Your shelter should be tailored to your environment, and you'll need to learn how to make shelter suitable for the season you find yourself in. If you've headed up north, then during winter shelter will actually be pretty easy. Simple snow caves can be deceptively warm and comfortable, as snow is a fantastic insulator, and the chill of the snow outside your inner chamber will help keep the snow on the inside from melting due to your heating the place up with your body. You can even make small fires inside snow caves, though of course, you want to ensure that you have proper ventilation. To create a snow cave, simply dig into a deep snow bank about 3 feet down, and then level off a foot or two and make a sharp right or left turn, followed by one more sharp turn. The U-bend you create will help keep out chill winds and trap heat. On the ceiling, you'll want to bore out a small ventilation shaft just a few inches wide. Because even if you don't light a fire, snow caves can get lousy with CO2 from all your breathing. In the warmer months, building a mound-type stick hut is quick and easy, plus surprisingly sturdy and good at keeping out rain and wind if built correctly. Start by finding large, sturdy branches to act as the foundation, and then lay them against each other so they form a large dome. The weight of the branches leaning against each other should be sufficient to keep them propped up, so your initial foundation is probably going to require a lot of large, thick branches. After this layer, you'll want to find smaller, leafy branches to cover up the first layer thoroughly. Then simply repeat for at least three more layers to create multiple layers of leafy branches over your foundation of thick, strong branches. Once that's done, add a final layer of thick, strong branches to make sure that strong wind doesn't blow your thinner, leafy branches away. 
In essence, what you've done is create a multi-layered structure that will be very effective at keeping the wind and even rain out, though you may have a few small leaks in places. If you want to take your shelter building game to a whole new level though, fill buckets with fresh wet river mud and smear a layer of mud in between the leafy layers and the final layer of thick branches. Once the mud dries and hardens, you'll have waterproofed your makeshift house and you'll be riding out the apocalypse in true hobo fashion. Got any other great DIY life hacks for surviving? surviving the zombie apocalypse? Let us know in the comments, and as always if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more great content.